Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video here at the Jesus Truth channel. Thank you very much for stopping by. What is this? You guys all know what this is, right? It's the Star of David. And it's usually recognized as a symbol of modern Jewish identity and Judaism. And it's also recognized as the flag of Israel. But what if I told you that King David never had a star? You heard me right. The Bible never mentions that David had or used any kind of a star. It's never mentioned, not once. Bible results for King David, 201. Star of King David results, zero. The Star of David? Nowhere in the Bible or the Talmud is this referenced as the Star of David. However, the Bible does reference this to be the Star of Remphan, belonging to Moloch, Satan. Ironically though, when asking a contemporary Israeli what the flag represents, usually the answer will be the Star of David, which is never mentioned in the Bible. But more evidence is uncovering its origin, and so far, all the signs lead to Solomon's ring, Saturn, and the worshipping of Moloch. The Hexagram The so-called Star of David is essentially a hexagram, nothing more, nothing less. There is no biblical or Jewish evidence that traces this ancient occult symbol with King David of Israel. However, there is evidence that it was used by King Solomon after he turned to pagan gods and the occult late in his life, causing God to become very angry with him. So if King David never used a star, where did it come from? Babylonian astrologers divided the heavens into 36 constellations. These were represented by different amulets called Sigilla Solis, or the Sun Seal. These amulets were worn by the pagan priest and they contained all the numbers from 1 to 36. With these numbers, they claimed to be able to foretell future events. If you count the boxes, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, it comes to 6, and 3 times is 666. Six, six. Also, these coins have the six-pointed star in many places. So 666 is a number associated with pagan sun worship, which originated in the mysteries of ancient pagan Babylon. Sun worship, which is really Satan worship, has existed for thousands of years and is still worshipped to this very day by Mystery Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, and the global elite in the world. Here is a Babylonian seal showing the goddess Ishtar carrying a staff with the six-pointed star. Here is another one showing the six-sided star. So the six-pointed star was originally worshipped by Babylon and has nothing to do with King David. The Bible even warns us in Revelation 18.4 to come out of Babylon. So if King David didn't have or use a star, where is it found in the Bible? Israel adopted the six-pointed star in the wilderness due to their apostasy. The star was worshipped by the Israelites as the star of Chayun, which represents the god Saturn, also called Moloch. This is found in Amos chapter 5, verse 26. But you have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chion your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. And we see that Chion is also another name for Saturn and is also known as Remphan. It also tells us in Acts chapter 7 verse 43 who the star represents. You took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which you made, to worship them. 
And here we see that Remphan represents the star god Saturn, or Moloch. So we can say this, Chayun worship is Remphan worship, which is Moloch worship, which is Saturn worship, which all boils down to Satan worship. That's right, it all boils down to Satan worship. We know from the Bible that when you get married, you should be equally yoked so that you both have the same belief system. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And Solomon really messed this up because not only did he get married to someone with a different belief system, he did it 700 times. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. To please his wives, Solomon even got involved in sacrificing to Moloch, the god that required child sacrifices and other detestable acts. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. After his marriages to his many wives, Solomon gave himself up to witchcraft and idolatry, and built altars to Moloch Remphan, the ancient Egyptian star god. This is very significant because Solomon was a man of wisdom, who was allowed to build the temple of God. Yet late in his life, Satan deceived Solomon to worship and build altars to false gods and to use the hexagram to invoke the powers of Satan. This is exactly what Satan likes to do, to try to mimic God. So, God had Solomon build a temple to him. And then later, Satan deceived Solomon into building altars to false gods. Satan is very cunning like this. The six-pointed star is engraved on the talisman of Saturn, which is used in ritual magic. The bowl, which also represents Remphan and Moloch, Remphan is Saturn, Saturn is Satan. The talisman of Saturn. On the first face is engraved a pentagram or a star with five points. On the other side is engraved a bull's head enclosed in a six-pointed star and surrounded by letters composing the name Remfa. Moloch is also known as Chayun. Child sacrifices were offered to both Moloch and Saturn. God even warns us in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 2 that if you give your seed, meaning your child, to Moloch, you shall surely be put to death. Satanists, occultists, and Freemasons idolize King Solomon who owned a magic ring that was engraved with the seal of Solomon, which gave him power over the invisible realms of demons. At this point, you might be saying to yourselves, I don't believe it. I don't believe that King Solomon had a magic ring called the seal of Solomon. I don't believe that Solomon was in any way connected with a six-sided hexagram. Oh really? Well take a look at this. The seal of Solomon, or the ring of Solomon, is the signet ring attributed to King Solomon in medieval Jewish tradition and in Islamic and Western occultism. It was often depicted in either a pentagram or hexagram shape. The latter is also known as the Star of David in Jewish tradition. This ring variously gave Solomon the power to command demons, genies, or to speak with animals. Due to the proverbial wisdom of Solomon, his signet ring, or its supposed design, it came to be seen as an amulet or talisman, or a symbol or character in medieval and renaissance era magic, occultism, and alchemy. Let's take a look at some replicas of Solomon's ring and talisman. In no way, shape, or form should you buy these items. This is for illustration purposes only.
Like it or not, we have to face the fact that later in Solomon's life, he turned to magic and witchcraft due to the influences from his many pagan wives. The hexagram equates to 666, which the Bible says is the sign of the beast. It has six points, forms six mini triangles, and its interior forms a six-sided hexagon. The six points, six triangles, and the six sides of the hexagon equals 666. I know many of you are not going to like this next part, but the truth is the truth. We know from the Bible that Solomon was the wisest man to ever live. So we can equate wisdom to Solomon. And we also know from Revelation chapter 13, 18, that the number of a man is 666. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So, does here is wisdom mean here is Solomon? Hmm, makes you wonder. And we know that Solomon was paid 666 talents of gold. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold. So we can deduce that wisdom is Solomon, the number of a man is 666, and that Solomon was paid 666 in gold. Sounds to me that during Solomon's wicked phase of his life, he was 666. And this is represented by the seal of Solomon, the hexagram. So it was Solomon, not David, who used the hexagram. One of Satan's main goals is to get everyone here on earth to worship him and to not worship the true king, Jesus Christ. Satan even tried to get Jesus to worship him by tempting him in the wilderness. But most people aren't going to worship Satan directly, so he uses other gods and idols to accept worship indirectly. Satan does things in secret, and that's why most people don't even realize what the Star of David really represents. Throughout the Middle Ages, the Seal of Solomon has been used by Arab and Kabbalist magicians, Druid witches, and Satanists. It's used in magic, witchcraft, sorcery, occultism, alchemy, and the casting of horoscopes by astrologers. In fact, the word hex, as in to put a hex on someone, derives from the word hexagram. It's no mystery that in all the occults, the hex plays a central role in Satan worship. The hexagram, like the pentagram, is used in practices of the occult and ceremonial magic. Helena Blavatsky wrote that Lucifer is the true God, and she incorporated the hexagram in the emblem of the Theosophical Society, which she founded in 1875. The six-sided star is prominent in their emblem, which includes the swastika, the ankh, a cross with a circle that represents eternal life, and do not confuse the ankh and the Christian cross to represent the same thing, they do not. The Om a sacred symbol in Hinduism, and the Ouroboros, an ancient symbol depicting a serpent or dragon eating its own tail. She believed that there is no religion higher than Lucifer's truth. Notice the hexagram above the building. And notice the three hexagrams on the gate entrance.
Aleister Crowley was a terrible decadent, heroin addicted, bisexual Satan worshiper who asked the people to call him the Beast 666. He founded the Satanic Order of the Silver Star and he designed the Unicursal Hexagram, which is a variation of the Hexagram. His satanic motto was, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And look who else adopted that motto. And to all of you Beatles fans out there, sorry to burst your bubble, but Aleister Crowley was on the cover of one of their albums. Ask yourself, why would the Beatles put a known Satan worshiper on the cover of one of their albums? In the 17th century, the family changed their last name from Bauer to Rothschild, which means Red Shield. And family patriarch Mayor Amschel Bauer began hanging a red hexagram in the front of their house to identify it. The red hexagram was patterned after the Ring of Solomon. The Rothschilds are Satanists who used this powerful magic symbol in their coat of arms. The Rothschild family is ultra wealthy because their banking schemes have stolen the wealth of the nations, including the United States via the Federal Reserve Bank. They're gathering the world's wealth so that they can control the one world monetary system. They have hundreds of trillions of dollars and they control the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the International Bank of Settlements in Switzerland, and the central banks of nearly every country in the world. Perhaps the brain chip that Elon Musk says will be implemented in late 2020 will be the start to the one world monetary system and not the RFID chip that many think it will be. Put a chip in someone's brain and then mind control them with 5G that's coming soon. It's highly possible. The Illuminati infiltrated the Order of Freemasonry to use it as a front organization to promote their satanic agenda to create a new world order. You can clearly see the hexagram shape hidden in their compass and ruler design. And also their rings, temples, and other places display the satanic hexagram. At the lower levels, Freemasons are not made aware of the Satanic Secret Society. At the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, their God is revealed as Lucifer the Light Bearer. The six-pointed blazing star points to the true deity they worship, Lucifer. Through the Freemasons, the evil elite recruit the best people in society and promote the ones who conform to their will. This helps them build levels of control as these people run governments, corporations, military, and many other high-powered positions. King Solomon is the most important figure in Freemasonry because he fell away from God and worshipped false gods, and he used the six-sided star to invoke the powers of Satan. We see the all-seeing eye of Lucifer prominently displayed on their coins. Even Shaquille O'Neal is a Freemason. Here is a look at his ring. These people are everywhere, hidden in plain sight. The Pope isn't Jewish, so why does he have a Star of David on his headpiece? Because this is the magical seal of Solomon, and it represents magic and Satan worship. Catholics are supposed to be Christians, right? So why do they have a Jewish symbol in their churches?
And what is this on the Pope's robe? Is that the horns of Satan? The Cairo symbol has pre-Christian connections and is believed to have been revered by pagans who worshipped false gods. Constantine, the founder of the Roman Catholic Church, claimed he saw this same symbol in a dream and then proceeded to put it everywhere, even on his coins. He claimed that it was a symbol for Christ, but the very first thing that he did was to associate the symbol that he saw for Christ with money. Makes you wonder. I don't think Jesus would want to be on a coin and associated with money. Do you? It has six points which forms a hexagram. The Roman Catholic Church uses the Cairo symbol in conjunction with the hexagram. For this next part, I want you to please pay special attention because I am trying to get you to connect all the dots to see how this deception is right in front of your eyes. The Bible warns us to not worship the sun, the moon, or the stars, and hath gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. But yet, what did ancient Babylon and ancient Egypt do? They worshiped the sun, the moon, and the stars, completely opposite of what God said to do. The sun god, Baal, Tammuz, Ra, Horus, was worshipped in ancient times. It was sometimes depicted with one eye, the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. Mithra with a halo, a sun god with a halo, Apollo with a halo. The Ouroboros is a snake, or serpent, forming a circle by eating its tail. This symbol is tied to sun worship. The Egyptian sun god Ra has a snake wrapped around a sun disk, relating the serpent to the sun. Picture number one. The solar blaze is the sun god, Shamash, placed within the crescent of the moon goddess or queen of heaven. Number two. Assyrian style relief of King Barak. Note the sun disk inside of a crescent moon. Number three. The Egyptian apis bull, likely the pattern used for the golden calf the Israelites made at Mount Sinai. Note the sun disk and horns, identical to the Catholic monstrances. Number four, Egyptian goddess Isis. Her headdress shows the sun disk within the horns of an apis bull, identical to that of the Catholic sunburst monstrance. Number five, ornament from King Tut's tomb cradled securely in the womb of a crescent moon in a solar disk. Number six. Like a Buddha, she sits on top of the crescent moon at a Catholic church in Chicago. Number seven. Catholic monstrance used to hold the sun disk wafer god. Number eight. The Catholic monstrances use a crescent to mount the wafer god, thus duplicating the imagery of the solar disk in a crescent the ancient symbol of cosmic conception. Roman Catholicism, a continuation of ancient pagan idolatry, or the biggest coincidence in the universe. You decide. The popes are the high priest of Baal, the Babylonian sun deity. They surround themselves with sun worship symbols. The Pope's Monstrance features a hexagram surrounded by a sun symbol. The hexagram is disguised, as most people don't understand the meaning of the six points on this monstrance. It clearly forms a hexagram, and it has the wafer, 
the supposed body of Christ right in the middle of the satanic symbol. The hexagram is a curse mark, so in essence, this is cursing the body of Christ. Notice that the sun waves, or rays, have six-sided stars on them as well. When most people see a religious picture with a halo or ring above someone's head, they don't think much of it. They think that it just means that these people are holy. Well, think again. This halo is a representation of pagan sun god worship. So whenever you see a picture that has a halo or sun disk behind their head, this has a hidden message in plain sight. It is pagan sun worship right in front of our faces, and most people have no idea. Let's look at some of these images, and keep in mind, these are all Catholic images. These next few pictures of Mary not only have the sun rays above her head, they have the six-sided hexagram stars as well. And now the Catholic Church is getting really bold. This statue of Mary not only has the sun rays, but it also has the pyramid with the all-seeing eye of Lucifer in it. Sun halos around all of their heads. Seems very obvious that they are paying homage to Egyptian sun god worship. And look at this trend from the 2018 Met Gala. They all look like they have sun rays coming out of their heads. Now ask yourself this, why would this be a trend? Maybe because they are secretly worshiping the Babylonian sun god, Lucifer. And it gets even worse. Look at this mother-child sun worship. Mother-child sun worship started in ancient Babylon. Notice the sun disks above all of their heads. It's right in front of our faces, and most people have no idea what it represents. Why do Mary and baby Jesus always have sun disks and sun rays above their heads? because the Catholic Church is pushing the Luciferian sun god worship on us, hoping we don't find out. Well, now you know. In this one, she has the hexagram on both shoulders and forehead. It can't get more obvious than this, hexagram sun worship.
This one, both have sun disks and Mary has hexagrams. And this one? Whoa! They are covered in sun rays, surrounded by six-sided hexagrams. Mary has a crown with hexagrams, and the pyramid and all-seeing eye of Lucifer is right above them. If you are a Catholic watching this, come on, wake up. The truth is right here in front of you. And check this out. Beyonce's pregnant Grammy performance from a few years ago. Remind you of anything? This is a perfect example of the elite putting mother-child-son-god worship right in your faces. The other performers even have sun discs around their heads. Sure looks like pagan sun god worship to me. Here is the Jesuits logo. What do you think the IHS stands for? They tell us the IHS stands for the first three letters of the name Jesus in Greek. So, they say that the IHS symbol means Jesus. That may be the case from the outside point of view looking in, but to the Jesuits, the real meaning of IHS is Isis, Horus, and Set. Egyptian Pagan Gods IHS Isis, Horus, and Set surrounded by sun rays If you are wise enough to connect all the dots, it always goes back to the Babylonian Egyptian Gods, which is Pagan Sun Worship. As we continue to put the pieces of the puzzle together, maybe now, you will start to understand how the Egyptian gods, the pyramid, and the all-seeing eye fit into the Luciferian agenda that is being pushed on us by the elite that rule this world. Even Katy Perry is telling us who she worships. So the next time you are in a church, Catholic or not, and you see a stained glass window with a hexagram and the sun shining through it, you will know that this is Luciferian sun worship, and you should get up out of your seat and get out of that church as fast as you can. And let me connect the dots even further. There was a documentary that came out in 2007 called Zeitgeist. Notice that it has a globe earth with bars around it. They are showing you right to your faces that you are locked into the lies of the globe earth. One of the main themes of this film was to depict that Jesus Christ was just a copy of all the other pagan gods and that Jesus was actually just sun worship. Their main goal was to get people to not worship Jesus as the Son, S-O-N, of God, but rather as Jesus the Son, S-U-N, as in pagan worship. Notice what the film says. Horus, born on December 25th. Attis, born on December 25th. Mithra, born on December 25th. Dionysus, born on December 25th. Jesus, born on December 25th. This film made many mistakes, but the biggest mistake that it made was trying to get us to believe that Jesus was born on December 25th, which he was not. So if Jesus was not born on December 25th, there is no way he can be just a copy of all these other pagan gods that were born on the sunrising day of December 25th. So too bad, Zeitgeist, you have been busted as a liar. This documentary has been debunked many times as a fraud. 
Maybe now you know why the Roman Catholic Church picked December 25th to be Jesus' birthday. Because this is a pagan holiday representing sun worship. They have tried to turn Jesus into a pagan sun god. Buddhism, which denies that Jesus is the Son of God, uses the hexagram. Hinduism, which denies that Jesus is the Son of God, uses the hexagram. And here is Krishna with a sun halo around his head. Islam, which denies that Jesus is the Son of God, also uses the hexagram. Mormonism, which denies that Jesus is the Son of God, uses the hexagram. And here is a picture of the all-seeing eye of Lucifer at the Mormon Church History Museum in Salt Lake City, Utah. And this one is from the Salt Lake Temple in Utah of the All-Seeing Eye. Why does the Mormon Church have the All-Seeing Eye of Lucifer on its temples? The hexagram is used amongst many religions to try to get everyone worshipping the sun god Lucifer from ancient Babylon. Let's talk about this whole coexist movement. Stars like Bono of U2 promote the coexist theme to mislead people. It's used on their coexist bumper stickers, which prepares the world to put away the differences of their religions in the name of peace. What is their agenda? I believe their agenda is to try to get everyone to be one in religion and then at the last minute, they will reveal that the one that you have been following is the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. Most people will have no clue that they were deceived into worshiping Lucifer. In the New World Order, there will only be one religion, and it will be Lucifer worship and not Jesus worship. Madonna is pushing the coexist agenda with the Star of Satan and the Flag of Islam. On the $1 bill, a hexagram is formed when the outline of the pyramid and surrounding letters is traced. The Jesuit symbol and words are on the $1 bill because they control the Federal Reserve. The hexagram shows up in America because we are controlled by the Illuminati. Here's the hexagram on the great seal of the $1 bill. It is above the eagle's head formed by 13 stars. The evil elite love the number 13. Besides the 13 stars, there's also 13 letters, 13 arrows, 13 red-white stripes, 13 olives, and even 13 layers of brick on the pyramid. The American dollar is full of satanic symbols and most people have no idea that it is even there. This is the logo of the Goals 2000 education curriculum implemented under the Clinton administration. Look closely and you will see three sixes in the logo where the inner circle spins off three times. Bristol Myers Squibb is a global pharmaceutical company that provides drugs instead of prevention. Their logo features the hexagram, though it is hidden, so a faint red background was added to help you see it. The Star of Life featuring a serpent on a pole should give you a clue. The Illuminati have taken control of our medical care by controlling the Association of American Medical Colleges and the American Medical Association. 
to promote drugs, not basic preventative nutrition. What is Satan? A fallen angel, and he is also represented by a snake. What do you see in this common pharmaceutical logo? Wings and a snake. So, Satan is a fallen angel come down to poison us with drugs. Drugs represent Satan, not good health. Here is another common medical logo. What I see when I look at this is, if you want to drink from the cup of life, which is from God, you have to go through Satan to get it. Satan is guarding the cup of life from God because he does not want you to drink from it. And here's one more. The standard RX logo, which stands for pharmacy and prescriptions. Sure looks a lot like the Eye of Ra or the Eye of Lucifer to me. The Egyptian doctors use magic and spells to try to heal their people. And today, the doctors give us deadly drugs to try to heal us. All the signs are out there. You just have to be wise enough to see them. The AIPAC logo, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, is an Illuminati Jesuit front organization that lobbies to ensure U.S. support of Israel. This allows them to control the Middle East, to steal the resources, to overthrow dictators who don't conform to their will, and to deceive Christians about the Jews. It's like they are hexing the entire audience from the stage. The World Jewish Congress is an Illuminati Jesuit front organization that lobbies to ensure worldwide support of Israel. The hexagram was adopted by the Zionist organization at the first Zionist Congress in 1897. This is the Freemasonry symbol of the Baden Powell Royal Arch Chapter. This is the Freemasonry symbol of the Prince Henry the Navigator chapter. This Freemason symbol says, If thou can comprehend these things, thou knowest enough, which once again focuses on Satan's tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life of the true God. The standard sheriff's badge is the shape of a hexagram. Are cops putting hexes on us without even knowing it? Or maybe the cops are hexed. What is Miley Cyrus doing with a Star of David up on stage? Is she really supporting the Jews? Or is she pushing the Star of Satan agenda and trying to get everyone to worship the one-eyed God of the Egyptians? Looks like they got Britney Spears in on the agenda as well. Here is Seth Rogen. Now I understand that he is Jewish, but what's with the S in the middle? I think this S stands for Satan. And check out Kyrie Irving's hand tattoo. It doesn't get any more clear who he worships. Lucifer, the one-eyed god with the hexagram of magic surrounding him. And the all-seeing eye inside of a pyramid on his shoulder. Now that you know that the six-sided star is not really the Star of David, and you know that it is a satanic symbol, how could it possibly represent a country of people that is referred to as God's chosen people? The answer? The Rothschilds funded the Zionist movement to create the State of Israel. The State of Israel is controlled by the Jesuits, the covert military arm of the Roman Catholic Church, through the Rothschild family. In 1897, the Rothschilds founded the Zionist Congress to promote Zionism. 
The Rothschild hexagram was put on the Zionist flag, which 51 years later, in 1948, ended up on the flag of Israel. The Jesuits needed the land of Israel to be able to control the Middle East oil reserves, and as we've seen with the help of the United States, the majority of the Middle East oil reserves are now under Illuminati control. Why do you think that we have been at war with the Middle East ever since the false flag event of 9-11? Even Trump tells us why we are there. They also needed to be able to overthrow the leaders of Islamic countries, to replace them with Jesuit-controlled puppets who will help bring each country into the new world order. The U.S. has helped remove the leaders in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Egypt, etc. And the leaders of Syria and Iran are in the crosshairs. And ask yourself this. Why has the United States given Israel a gazillion dollars over the years? Makes me wonder why the politicians and presidents are pushing so hard with the AIPAC. There is some hidden agenda going on behind the scenes with the whole country of Israel that we don't know about. Again, this is how Satan operates. Israel is God's chosen people, and Satan is turning the country into something evil. Only time will tell. Ultimately, the Jesuits needed control of the land of Israel to be able to position their end times false messiah in Jerusalem, which is central to the three major religions. When the flag of Israel was unveiled, it was met with tremendous opposition from Jews who realized that this hexagram was used in the ancient mystery religions as the symbol of Moloch. The emblem on the flag is a blue-colored version of the Rothschild red hexagram. The star is on the flag because the Rothschilds own and control the state of Israel. The six-pointed star on Israel's flag represents the star of Satan, not the star of David. The state flag of Israel, from the very beginning, should have been the menorah, like the Jews originally wanted it to be. So let me summarize by saying this. The six-pointed star is the supreme symbol of satanic power, which has been used by people throughout history to directly or indirectly worship Satan. The idolatrous Babylonians, Egyptians, and Assyrians used it. The Israelites worship star gods, which were known as Moloch, Remphan, and Chaun. Solomon used the talisman of Saturn, which has a hexagram, in worship of false gods to invoke the powers of Satan. The Roman Catholic Church uses it. The Illuminati Jesuit ultra-wealthy Rothschild family uses it. Satanists, Luciferians, astrologers, and witches use it to invoke the power of demons. The six-sided star numerically equals 666. Six points, six triangles, six-sided hexagon. It's on Israel's flag because the Antichrist Jesuits control the state of Israel. The entire world, especially Christians, have been deceived into thinking that the Star of David is a sign of God's people, when in reality it is the Star of Satan and is ushering in a one-world Luciferian religion. So if you are wearing what you believe to be the Star of David around your neck, 
or you have a Star of David flag in your home, whatever it may be, there very well might be a hex attached to that symbol and it might be affecting you. So I would say, throw all of these things away as soon as you can. Star of David? No. Star of Satan? Yes. Don't be fooled. Knowing the truth about what is really going on in our world and who really controls it will make you free. So thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please share this video with your friends and family to help spread the truth of Jesus Christ. God bless and I will see you next time.